recording. Right above there, Mike. 732-828-2261, bud. We're good? Okay, guys. So um, we're going to give back to you here. We're going to do three prizes today. This is going to be for anyone who bought any spot of any kind today, meaning if you buy one spot, you'll have one entry. If you buy five spots, you'll have five entries. We're going to do three prizes. Uh, the team told me that we can do this and administer this no problem. So the first prize is going to be a $50 break credit to vintagebreaks.com. Second prize is a 53 Bowman color set break spot. And third prize will be a 1968 Topps set break spot. So for those of you who have already bought a spot today, you need not to do anything to enter. For those of you who are interested with the three prizes we're giving out, thanks Chris, appreciate the help bud. Um, for those of you who have already bought, you don't have to worry, you already entered. For those of you who'd like to enter, all you gotta do is pick up one spot before we go offline today. And I'll give you at least a few minute heads up before we're gonna do that. We're not gonna be able to stay live, uh, or stay long live too late tonight, but we're uh, making some headway catching up. And uh, it's just our way of giving back and, um, you know, candidly rewarding you guys for being so patient uh, with us as we were uh, experiencing an incredible growth period. So there you go. We've got three cards, uh, three prizes set aside. Um, we are hoping in terms of the big board, for those of you who are familiar with it, um, I appreciate you waiting for us to update it. Uh, we are going to be updated by Thursday. I don't believe it will happen by tomorrow because John is actually going to be going to Baltimore to participate in an interview with the Baltimore Sun and Chris Roth, the gentleman who won the 55 bone mantle. However, we did add some uh, big board offline cards today. We added a 65 tops mantle. That's now a new offline card, so everyone who spends 100 bucks offline, you'll be entered into that. When we have 100 people, we'll give that away. And we have a new big board card when we're live. It's a 63 tops mantle. That's the next 150 people at $100. And once again, for those of you who have been buying, we appreciate your support. Johnny Five and the team will have the um, current big board list, both offline and online, updated by our Thursday show. So for not for tomorrow, but for our Thursday show. And we are going to be uh, streamlining the way we're doing it moving forward, so that way we can handle the influx of requests. So thanks again, everybody. We have now uh, randomized the list, 70 times baseball, ready to go. You guys have heard me talking way too much. Let's bust this open. Great. Send. I sent that off to the team. So how many of you out there were at the National? And for those of you who were there, how many of you heard my ridiculous yelling and screaming when we got like the most improbable pull in the entire world on the last card? I mean, I still can't but get over it when I think about it like that. Um, everyone's extremely fortunate. And... Uh, very cool, Jim. I'm excited that I want to take that off. So, Jim, I did look into that. Um, I'll write you offline, uh, you know, either tonight or tomorrow morning. I did find out where the collection that's from. But that Ty Cobb has not been circulated, meaning um, it's not, you know, from a dealer's table we bought it from. Generally, almost all the cards that we either give away um, on vintage breaks or we sell through hit randoms and stuff are not recycled, meaning they come from fresh collections that just collect.com buy. And uh, I think that's real exciting. Well, Bob, that's real kind of you to say. I don't know if it's actually true, but certainly that's what we're going for. So, Johnny Five, we're getting down. We're opening up another pack. So, G. Perez, what we pulled at the National was a 1955 Bowman. <laughs> Scott, that's probably about right. Um, we pulled a Mickey Mantle from a 1955 Bowman cello pack as the, from the second to last card in the pack. And we already knew that the last card was Johnny Padre, so it was unbelievable. All right, so we're going to make sure I got my tools here. They don't really deal with the modern 90s, no. If it's like LeBron James rookies, you know, high end like that sort we do, we get contact with a lot of, lot of, uh, lot of modern cards. <laughs> oh my goodness, MJL, that was hysterical. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very exciting time period, Jim. It really is. Uh, you know, it's exciting to you know, ramp up the company. Um, you know, as a boss and as an owner, I'm very transparent with the guys that work for us. Um, you know, they know what's going on. So, you know, there's no closed door meetings. Um, you know, they, they know. We had to ramp up. We all worked on it together. And uh, we're real, real proud of that. Hey, Chris, how are you, bud? <laughs> so, Gelf, I've heard that uh, 
you know, you and several other people, uh, I'm glad that Vintage Breaks is not only insured, but we're an LLC, because I got a feeling we got some lawsuits coming in, but mainly because of hearing problems from the National. I didn't know that uh, I was going to be that loud. Ooh. We got to uh, make sure we don't go too far on this one. I wouldn't mind some goggles that, uh, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar used to wear. They actually go for a lot in auction. I bid on a pair uh, from our good friends at SCP. They actually had an auction close on Saturday night. I won some stuff. They have great vintage basketball memorabilia, of which I'm a big fan. And they had a pair of uh, Jabbar goggles that went for thousands of dollars. Yeah, I couldn't rationalize that to my wife and three-and-a-half-year-old son. That, uh, you know, we decided your first semester of college is going to be something that I'm going to wear during our vintage break show. So, Bob, we're actually going to be meeting with Chris tomorrow. He'll be seeing his mantle in person for the first time. You know, John, when uh, the FedEx guy comes in, it kind of reminds me of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood when I was a kid. You know, like people would knock on the door. You'd have the postman knock on the door. You know, the, the friendly neighbor. Maybe the not-so-friendly neighbor, but probably not a Mr. Rogers. All right. Give me one second, everybody. Just sign them back in here. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, Rico's got some problems. He's an older gentleman, and I, I really, I, uh, I should have been thrown into the penalty box for that. But, you know, good thing I wasn't. All right. Good luck to everyone in the pack. Steven, you got the first card here. Let's get down to it. Yes, it is. John, I'm a, I'm a pro. Now, I'm, I'm not good at remembering to uh, turn on local recording. Wow. This is a brick of mint cards. It's just really a matter of where the centering falls. Wow. Unbelievable. Like, check that out just from the side. I mean, that's what vending looks like. Beautiful. Okay. Good luck, everyone. Oh, I'm going to do my... Uh, here we go. Whoop. Rick Monday. Card one, going out to Steve. So we already knew the centering on that. Not bad for our first card. Steve, you actually get the second card as well. Cito Gaston, former Blue Jays manager. Now, if I'm not mistaken, for those of you baseball fans out there, Oh, no, you know what? I don't think it was Cito Gaston, but maybe. Didn't a Blue Jays manager lie about his service in the military? And if it wasn't Cito, who was it? Curious minds want to know. Guy Thomas, card three coming up. Ricky Clark. Mint. Sharp corners. Great collar and focus. Just a little bit, unfortunately, off center, top to bottom. Card four, Brian D. There we go. Nice, strong, centered card. Pete Richer, Riker? I don't know. But, nice card. Card number four, Brian D. That looks gradable to me. Tim Johnson. Yeah, Matt, thank you. I knew it was a Blue Jays manager, but I didn't think it was Cito. This is cool. We got a Pirates team card coming up. Fairly well centered, featuring Roberto Clemente. That is going out to you. Spot six, that's Landon G. If that was my card, I would get it slab. Wow, that's uh, Jim, I'm definitely going to ask that question in the future. So apparently Rick Monday, who was on top of the pack, guys, was the first pick ever in the first Major League Baseball draft ever. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So whoever got 608, if you want that graded, I think that was Landon. Let me know. Be on the house, bud. Joe Pepitone, towards the latter part of his career when he was no longer a Yank. Yeah, no, I love the trivia question. Now I just got to, you know, commit it to uh, the memory bank. Nice card on the Pep.
Bear with me one second, folks. So I'm going to type in uh, the special into YouTube when we're done with the 70 tops pack. We got card number seven coming up. But if you buy any spot today at all, whether it be we're live or earlier today, you'll be eligible for one of three prizes, $50 break credit, 1953 Bowman color set break spot, and a 1968 top set break spot. Card seven is going out to you, Jim, Mike. I'd like to call him cellular, but I know it's not. Just a hair off left to right. Maury Wills. He's a heck of a ball player back in the day. Not quite a Hall of Famer, but he was a good ball player. Fortunately, he's probably the worst center card that we got in the pack so far. Mark A, you're getting this card and the ninth card. Oh, absolutely, Rick. Um, Bob, that's a great story about Rick Monday. I think I've seen an ESPN 30 for 30 or something like that. Nice card coming up here. Once again, not quite a Hall of Famer, but was extremely popular and a great ball player. Norm Cash. That's yours, Mark. Rocco, you're coming up, bud. Hope all is well over there. I think, Rocco, you're from Florida, if I'm not mistaken. Can't wait to get back down there. Planning, actually, a buy trip down there in late September, early October. Cubby's team card. That's for you, Rocco. That's pretty funny, Matt. I mean, gorgeous card. Hair off left to right. But features already banks. A bunch of other good players. Dean Chance. Card number 11. Looks to be solid PSA 8 material. Probably not much higher only because of the centering left to right. Michael T. I gotta be honest, I don't know. Maybe now Chancellor and uh, still probably a little bit off. Texas, okay. Cleon Jones. Jim, that's your card, card 12. I mean, these cards are crispy mint. I would love a PSA would grade all of the cards that we opened, national uh, vintage breaks, you know, fresh from vintage breaks. But like I said, Rome wasn't built in a day. So as we know, this is a very, uh, I wouldn't say popular, but this is a common occurrence that happens during Topps vintage packs, especially the larger ones. You have the potential to get the same card again. So we thought when we opened the ninth, but this one's gorgeous. By the way, whoever's card 13, Mark A, if you'd like that graded, I'd be happy to do that in the house. Card is really nice. Yeah, he died young, tough autograph, and Norm Cash was a great ball player. So as we uh, opened the 55 Bowman, we thought that we were going to get a second Ernie Banks or some other cards. Dean Chance, yep, second Dean Chance in here, so you never know. Spot 14 is going out to you, Chris, and then 15, Mark A, we're back to you. Looks like we got a Cleon. Ooh, this one's really nice. Probably... Uh, the best or the second nicest card that we got in the pack so far. This is going out to Mark A, I believe. Yep. Mark, I would grade this. If you'd like, we'll grade on the house for you, bud. Just let me know. Hey, Jay. How are you, bud? Good to see you. Al Downing, former Yankee. Here towards the latter part of his career. I don't know if he was on the great A's teams of the mid-70s. I don't know my baseball history that well. Spot 17, Brian D, and then Rocco from Texas. All right, we got a, our first checklist from the pack. Pretty nice card, probably straight eight. I don't think it'll nine because of the centering, but gorgeous card. Brian D. You know, ideally, not only we'd have these slab with the uh, special labeling, but uh, Jim, I believe we're going to be doing this program shortly. We're going to be, um, you know, putting something over the card saver. It's going to say Vintage Breaks Pack Fresh. And then that way, if you go to sell it, you know you can prove that it was uh, actually from the Vintage Breaks pack, and it is a pack fresh card. Wow, this is yeah. So there we go. We're starting to get some nicely centered cards, which is the key to the high grades. I do not know Jay, but I'm fairly certain he signed through the mail or did. But hit me with it. I'm curious. Ah, I should have known that, Bob. Yep. Very cool. That's a softball if I've ever heard of one. Okay, spot 18, Rocco. That's your card, Rocco, but if you want that graded, let me know. So, uh, Robert and or John, make sure on the 67 cell on the 70 tops baseball cell, you show him the Scott so he picks out anything gradable. 
Uh, okay, Mike Ryan, card night. Wow. Yeah, I mean, so you can see. You never know when they're going to hit you like this. But, I mean, this is dead on. Michael R., if you're on, bud, we're happy to grade it for you. I'm not going to tag him for now because we're going to run back through it for everyone. But, I mean, that card was spot on. Jim, spot 20. Joe Quaff. Try to pronounce it articulately. I don't think I did a great job there. Probably a straight eight, possible nine. Depends on uh, the exact centering. You got it, Rocco. I'll tag it for you. Great. That I'll remember, Matt. I remember for that from being a young kid. So, Rocco, you got that. And then I'm definitely going to grade Michael's card as well. All right, let me just move up that list a little bit. Okay. Spot 21, Rusty Staub. Once again, an example of another great ball player, not Hall of Fame material, but was a heck of a ball player, great, great uh, guy. Lost him uh, not too long ago. That was yours, Rocco. Joe. Got a gorgeous checklist coming up. <laughs> yeah. Joe K, I was really struggling with that one, bud. I really was. Yeah, sometimes if I just say the last name, I'm sorry, first name, um, last, first name, and then their last name, but first initial only, it's because I'm probably not that familiar of uh, how to say their name. Nice checklist, solid eight. That is yours, Joe. Michael R. Hope all is well, bud. Billy Wynn. This is spot on. I'm going to tag it for you, Mr. Russo. Card's gorgeous. Got to start getting some of the 10s on this. Jim, where did you watch that out of curiosity? Like, should I just, you, should I just Google it and watch it on YouTube? Because I'd like to see that. I love Vince Cully. Uh, okay, so grade... Spot 24, Jim Fragosi. See, this is what the centering gods do to you. They toy with your emotions. I mean, mint as can be, just unfortunately wicked off-centered. That was yours, Rocco. I'm sorry, bud. Spot 25. See, a nice card coming up behind this. Tom Griffin is card 25. Denny B., I'm sorry, Danny B. Next card, none other than the Hit King himself, but unfortunately, Wicked Off-Centered, and this is how crazy Top's production was this year. You saw, we have cards that have a chance at a 10, and then you have a Pete Rose that's Wicked Off-Centered. That's you, Mark A. This and the next card is yours. YouTube. I'm going to check it out, Jim. Looking forward. I think I watched it a long time ago. I like the Expos talk today. They did have a lot of uh, good ball players. Chico Ruiz... Sorry, folks. Once again, I mean, this is insane. The same pack, you got cards that made PSA 10, and now, like, the centering is getting worse. I'm looking forward to seeing the next cards. going to be half and half. That was uh, Mark A. Rocco coming up, hoping for a little better, and unfortunately, Rocco, I am not going to be able to report to you better centering news. Man, it's wicked. I did not, Bob, but I'll be sure to do that the second time I go through that. Eddie Cranepool. Yours, Rocco. Travis, you're coming up. Another Hall of Famer. Catfish. Unfortunately, even though better than better center than the Rose, we're just it's still wicked. Twenty nine. That's yours, Travis. Thirty. Delino De Shields, you know, not his dad, but the, you know, or Delino De Shields Senior, I should say. That's pretty wild, Matt. But we've got definitely some better roses than the one we just pulled. That was certainly one of the weakest centering ones that we had. Chris B., that was yours. Michael R., you have the next card, then Rocco, then Michael T. I believe this pack may have an extra card. We'll verify that in a minute. What's up, Michael Carbone? How are you, bud? Hope all is well. 
Yep. We have another Hall of Famer coming up, which is cool. And then we will have a 34th card. The Big Cat, Andre Scalaraga. Sure. All right. Orlando Cepeda, Hall of Famer, great ball player. Unfortunately, shares the same kind of centering as the Pete Rose, which is downright nasty. And I apologize. All right. So Ted Savage is the last card. If I could uh, just grab a card saver, please, uh, Robert. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see him here. My fault. Teddy Savage, we're going to random that off. All right, let me get the full list again. All right, guys, we're going to random off the Ted Savage three times is the list. Here we go. One person on top will get the free card of Ted Savage. And three person on top is Mark A. Okay, that concludes our 1970 Tops Baseball Cello Pack break. So for those of you who are new watching, tomorrow we'll be back, regular time, 6 p.m. breaking. Sorry about that, let me shut off my phone. And let me just stop local recording.